Hi hey everyone, this is Caitlin with the Aging Division, and this is the mail cost tool training. I wanted to mention that in the policies, this is referred to as the standardized cost sheet for nutrition programs, but just to make things easier, I'm referring to it as the meal cost tool. So just know that they're the same thing, but they it will be referred to as the meal cost tool for this presentation. I wanted to start out with where you can find the tool. So it is available on our website, the CLS website, which is on the Department of Health under Nutrition Services. And at the top of Nutrition Services page, there are different tabs. And this is under the Program Monitoring and Reports tab. If there are any updates or changes to the tool, I will notify the providers and the new document will be uploaded and updated on the website. So you can always find the most recent copy of the tool on there and just know that you will be notified if there are changes that will that were made. I also wanted just to do a brief review of the policy information on the tool. So basically the meal programs need to complete this tool annually. It helps determine the total meal cost and the guest fee that are charged to non-eligible individuals for the Title III programs. Um, and then it helps determine the guest fee that will be charged for the fiscal year, which as most of you know is October 1st through September 30th. Meal sites need to notify the division when the guest fee amount has changed and rationale behind the change. We do look at the guest fee amounts during quality assurance. So we just wanna be sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what the guest fee amounts are for each different site. If nutrition programs have local funding available to offer discounted meals to guests, um, a lot of different programs choose to offer discounted meals to their staff members. Um, you just know that you can do that as long as the full guest fee amount, which is determined by this tool, is covered by the nutrition program. So if you have local funding available to make up for the difference, then you are allowed to offer discounted meals to your guests. This is important. The tool we do once each federal fiscal year on October 30th. It is not due with the grant applications and it is not due in the prior or current fiscal year because we have to have an entire year of expenses recorded and also an entire year of meal counts recorded. So um, I will get into this a little bit later, but just know that it will be due on October 30th. Next, I wanted to do just a brief review of how it works, um, going into specific details on instructions, definitions, and then I do have an example of um, a program's grant application expenses. So hopefully it'll be able to show you true expenses, um, kind of what a general meal cost should be. First of all, what you need. So you do need the total revenue for the prior federal fiscal year. This revenue includes federal, state, local sources, and program income. It also includes UNSIP, which is not listed here, but any type of revenue you are receiving for the nutrition program needs to be included on the tool. You also need total actual, ex actual expenses for the prior federal fiscal year, which as I mentioned is October 1st through September 30th. Um, these actual expenses are what you use in that fiscal year to provide meals. And then finally, you need the total number of meals provided within a federal fiscal year. Um, and we need both meal counts for congregate and home delivered if you have both of those programs. Next, um, I have a section in the tool called instructions. So again, it's instructing you on how to fill out this tool. First, you'll want to enter your revenue by program into columns E and G. All or most of the information you will be entering will go into columns E and G. All other calculations will be done automatically. Once you've entered your revenue, you'll go down, which will be expenses, and you'll want to enter all of these again into E and G only. You'll only want to include expenses paid for with the nutrition program funds. So the revenue you reported in the upper portion, again, should only be nutrition program funding, and you'll want to be doing the same for expenses. Do not include value of in-kind because in-kind does not have an expense value attached to it. This can include volunteers or perhaps rent for um, the building that you're in. 
Um, these do not need to be included if they are counted as in-kind. Do not include costs associated with providing nutrition education, nutrition counseling, or health promotion. These are separate services and do not contribute to the meal cost. You'll also need to enter the number of meals served into the green cells on the right side of the spreadsheet. For the purposes of calculating an average meal cost, this includes only meals that meet Older Americans Act requirements. You should only be entering Older Americans Act meal requirement meals into SAMS, so they should be the same as your SAMS reports. If you are selling or providing individual food items, then you would calculate these costs separately. So if you serve and you should be serving emergency meals, um, you would not be including these in the cost of the nutrition program. Moving on into the expense categories, I have four different categories and they are, are all similar to the grant application. So I'm hoping that this will help you in terms of the flow of the tool um, and where you can get your expenses from. So first we have personnel and labor, and this includes salaries and wages that are charged to the nutrition program. This includes regular pay, overtime, vacation, and holiday. Also included under personnel is benefits. So whatever benefits you may offer your employees, they all need to be included under the expense categories of personnel as well. Next, we have travel. This includes several different things, including the cost of reimbursing staff or volunteers for using their personal vehicles for work-related trips, and this can be delivering meals for C2, if a director is traveling for work, types, th those types of things. Reimbursement or payment for C2 drivers would be included here. Also included is travel for conferences or training or out-of-town meetings. Not included is mileage reimbursement for drivers who transport participants to and from dining centers. Um, that is because this is a Title III B cost, so please do not include those under the nutrition program. The next expense category is supplies. This is um, very straightforward. It's any supplies associated with the production and service of food at the dining center or for home delivery meals. General supplies for the operation of the program could be disposables, um, cleaning supplies, office, book supplies, anything that you might deem necessary. And then also included is the amount expended for the purchase of all foods served in the nutrition program. The last category we have is other expenses. This includes costs associated with the maintenance and upkeep of the kitchen, mm -hmm. admin offices, and or all facilities if they are attributed to the nutrition program. This could be rent of the building, utilities, or building maintenance. Also included is communication and communication service costs such as phone, internet, or email. All equipment costs directly related to the meal preparation or serving, including purchases, repairs, or replacements. If you're renting or leasing equipment, it can also be included under here. It also includes basic business costs to run and manage the program. So SAMS, um, software that you might use for nutrition analysis, insurance, licenses. It also includes costs associated with purchasing, maintaining, or repairing a vehicle to transport meals. Include expenses paid for the nutrition program only and do not include expenses found in another budget in the agency. So if you are charging things to the Title III B grant, make sure that you're only charging them to that program and not including that in C as well. So next I have an example of a t of the meal cost tool that is filled out. I just wanted to point out too that um, all the information I had included in my presentation comes from the meal cost tool. I have different tabs on the bottom. So the first being instructions with obviously instructions on how to fill out the tool and all of that information I just stated in the presentation. The tab of definitions that goes into a little bit more detail than I outlined in the presentation. Um, and again, these are broken up by category based on the expenses on the, the actual tool. And then finally, I have the actual tool, which is where you'll be entering all of your expenses and revenue and meal cost. Um, 
or meals served for the meal cost tool. As you'll see here, here is columns E and G as outlined in the instructions. The top portion right here is revenue, so you will be putting all of your revenue in the top portion. If you do have something specific um, for program income, you can include it in the other revenue line item. Moving down, we have expenses. Again, these are broken up into the four different groups that I talked about in the presentation. Um, still here, we're putting the amounts in E and G, and that is basically where you're doing all of the work. There is a percentage column, but it automatically populates, so you don't have to worry about entering anything there. Um, you also will notice that the expenses are broken out into indirect and direct costs. I did leave a couple of options um, for other expenses that might be included under direct or indirect costs. You cannot go in and add or take out an item, a line item. So if there is something specific you feel maybe arguable under direct or indirect that might not be in those specific categories, feel free to contact me and I can alter the tool if needed. You'll see um, the purple column has the total expenses for each group subtotal. And then at the very bottom, we have total expenses. So these are the entire totals calculated for separated um, congregate is here and home delivered is here. Also included at the bottom is different percentages. Um, so food cost percentages, labor cost percentages, these can be useful for the nutrition program if you might need to be changing where you're doing your expenses. Um, it's also useful for me as well. And then up towards the right is the columns where I said you'll need to enter your number of meals served. So the first one, it populates automatically your total project costs. So um, again, this is combined with uh, C1 and C2 and it automatically populates based on the total expenses that you have entered. Then in this green column is where you'll wanna enter your number of meals served. This first one is your total number of meals, so it is including congregate and home delivered if you have both services. And then it populates your total project cost per meal. Down below is where we break it down by program. So right here you'll see you have the congregate, and again, this populates based on the total expenses you have entered. And then in the green is where you will enter your specific meal served for the congregate program. Here's your guest fee amount. So this is your meal cost. And then home delivered is the exact same. Um, obviously right here is what the information is what we're looking for. Um, so your guest fees posted at your nutrition site should be matching what is reported on this tool. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, as I said, some of the direct and indirect costs you may feel need adjusted, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm always willing to work with providers on these types of issues. So here is my contact information. And that's all I have. Thanks.